Having seen, uh, did you review the game already? Or, yeah. And what did you see that you liked and didn't like? Uh, just the activity level at both ends. Um, you know, on defense, we were flying around and we were helping and we were really connected. And uh, offensively, um, I thought everybody was attacking, driving kick, um, but taking care of the ball at the same time, just making simple decisions. You didn't see any crazy turnovers. You saw, saw a determined uh, attempt to get a good shot every time down the floor. And uh, so it was a really good, good night for us. Kevin had, Kevin had said that he got rolling because you ran more plays for him. Did, did, was it that dramatically different than a normal night as far as that? We, we added a couple of, of sets for him and, and uh, probably called some more plays for him. I think, um, I think that, uh, that's probably what he was referring to. And, uh, you know, he's, um, he's a guy who's capable of getting going any time he wants. Um, so, um, you know, we obviously want to get him the ball in positions to score. The beauty of Kevin is that he can score even if the play is not called for him. And I thought last night he was, it was kind of a combination. He was, he was super aggressive, and we, we tried to make a point of getting him the ball, too. Were you pleasantly surprised that you guys were able to bring Kavon back last summer? Um, yeah, I mean, we were, I, I, was, I was terrified all last year after we denied the, the option um, that we were going to lose him. Because we, I, I was, you know, I thought he was great last year, but it was a bad free agent uh, market. Uh, for the players last summer, and, and people just didn't have money. So uh, we got lucky in terms of being able to keep him, and he's uh, he's turned into such a good player for us, and I'm, I'm really, really hoping that we can keep him long term and um, that we can give him the, the contract he deserves, um, that he can make some, some uh, Good money, and we can enjoy having him on our team for many years. That's the that's the plan. You talked a lot about his defense, but what do you think of his offense and his evolution on that side of the ball? I think he's gotten better and better. You can see the confidence growing uh, every game. I don't know what he's shooting in this series, probably about eighty percent or so. You know, a lot of a lot of dunks, a lot of putbacks, but also making that mid range shot. So he's um, you know he, this is the best he's played in his career, and it makes sense. Um, it's the fourth year, I think, uh, but the first two were pretty much uh, a wash just because, uh, you know, the injuries. So it's the second year really uh, playing and being part of the rotation. And uh, generally, that's when you see a player really blossom is the, the, you know, after he's sort of gotten his feet wet and then, you know, now he can really focus on improving his game every night. How's the DeMarcus? Uh, DeMarcus is home. He's not on the trip, and uh, you know, obviously, uh, it's just not an easy thing for 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 anybody to go through an injury that he like he did last year, and then to get re-injured at the beginning of the playoffs. Um, so uh, it's it's tough, and, and we'll we'll see him when we get back, and hopefully he'll be back in the gym with us and. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's somebody we're thinking about and hoping uh, hoping he can make a, a good recovery quickly. Were you happy to see that tech rescinded? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the one, one of the things that worries me is that uh, you know, there's so many double techs being called to try to calm things down. Uh, but we're going to get hurt uh, by that with the, uh, the overall, you know, seven technical uh, rule being a, being a suspension. So... That's helpful, uh, but you can't have it both ways. You know, you can't uh, can't just call a double T every time to keep the game uh, in control, but then penalize the team that plays a lot of playoff games and, it, and uh, end up at those things add, start adding up. And I think the league uh, did a good job of uh, recognizing that you know both Kevin uh, and Jamichael were incredulous because they were actually laughing. They were talking a little trash, but. That's part of the game, you know. I, I, so I think the, the league did the right thing. You had said going into the playoffs that um, in the playoffs, referees let you play a little bit more. And yeah. Calls me. Last night, there were yeah. like 53 yeah. fouls called yeah. last night. Um, is that just the crew you got? or? No, I think the league is making a point of, of uh, not turning this into uh, a wrestling match. And uh, they set a tone last night. There were four fouls called in the first minute and a half yeah. or so. And um, you know, I think it's, I mean, it's helpful for us because we play more off the ball than probably anybody in the league. And um, 
usually what happens in the playoffs is your off-ball uh, cutters end up being grabbed and held and the, and the referees don't call that. So if they are calling that stuff, it's good for us. And then we have to adapt at the other end and, and uh, still defend, be physical, but without uh, without too much contact. And that's an area we've got to get better. You know, uh, we need staff to stop reaching and we need, uh, we need everybody uh, to stay engaged without grabbing and holding, and, um, and the league's the league's trying to enforce that. And it, like I said, it's good for us. Did you guys call attention to uh, some of the stuff that Patrick was doing in the first couple of games? The no, no, we never said anything to, to the league. Um, we uh, we just you know in, in the game, you know, Doc and I are always uh, on the officials trying to help our guys out, just like every other coach. But uh, there hasn't been any any contact with the league on that. Is this the best place you've seen Andre in physically in a while? He's been amazing. Andre uh, was tremendous last night, and uh, I said in the film session, oh, you know, oh, to be 35 again. And uh, <laughs> my son said, no, I saw you at 35, Dad. It wasn't that great. <laughs> and he's right. Uh, <laughs> but oh, to be Andre at 35, um, he's, uh, he just keeps himself in such great shape. And uh, he's had a great year, and, and um, this is... Uh, that's who he is, a tremendous defensive player, incredibly smart. He's as smart a player as I've ever been around at both ends. And that's one of the reasons he fits our team so well. We've got weapons everywhere, uh, we're a good defensive team, and he's in the middle of, of all of that at both ends. Um, but he helps his teammates. He makes everybody around him better because of his awareness and his knowledge. And it's, uh, it's a joy to watch Andre play. You pretty much matched his minutes last night with those of Lou Williams by design. Yeah, but but it's that's generally the pattern that each team has anyway. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Andre usually comes in mid first, and um, so we had a few minutes there in the second quarter where we gave Andre a rest and when Lou was out there. But we were we're blessed with a lot of guys who can defend uh, the perimeter. So you know, Clay was on him a little bit, and, and Kevin. And, uh, but uh, I thought I thought our, all in all our defense was really connected and we we did a good job on on their pick and roll much better than the first two games so that's got to continue. You said that uh, Andrew's been good for you guys, but in looking at the redoing things, did he do maybe even more than you thought last night? No, I saw every bit of it last <laughs> night. I did. I mean that guy is um, he's a wizard uh, out on the floor. He sees and feels the game like Andre does only at the center position um, and his uh, his voice is so prominent you know when you're down on the floor and our team's on defense you can just hear boats uh, barking out commands barking out signals letting guys know um, where they're you know where they need to be and so he's like a quarterback out there and uh, he's um, he's just a brilliant basketball player he knows where to be and and understands the angles and uh, knows how to attack. It's, it's fun to coach him. Kevon and Andrew are two guys that don't make a lot of mistakes at this okay. stage as opposed to season. How important is it to have guys out there who you just know you can rely on, you know, and they're not going to make a lot of mistakes? Uh, it's important to have uh, all your guys um, you know, play like that in the playoffs. You can't afford mistakes egregious mistakes. You're going to make some uh, naturally. The other team's going to force some, but uh, you just want guys to be solid, and uh, particularly guys like Bogues and Loon who are going to be off the ball, you know, not uh, not getting a ton of shots. They need to, to help the other guys uh, get good looks and then take their shots when they're there. And that's what they're both doing.